What is up, book review fam? My name is Frank Reynolds, and welcome to another episode of Is It Worth It? Where I talk about books across all genres and let you know which are worth your time. Who's ready to talk some books today? I am. <coughs> feeling a little under the weather, but that's okay. Show must go on, and today's show is going to talk about a classic novel from the 1990s that I recently finished and actually alluded to in last week's King Killer Chronicle review when I talked about Patrick Rothfuss's prose. I talked about some of the other greats in the genre when it came to rhythmic, beautiful, poetic writing. One of those authors was Robin McKinley. Robin McKinley is an English author who has written a ton of classics in the genre. She's a Newbery award-winning author. Her work is relevant. It could be read today in the same vein as it was when it was produced in the 1990s. And the work of hers that we're gonna talk about today is Deerskin. Deerskin is the story of Lisla Lassar, a beautiful princess of one of the seven kingdoms who undergoes a absolutely tragic and traumatic event in her upbringing that leads to her living a life on her own and just simply trying to survive alongside her dog, Ash. Their journey is a fairy tale of sorts, but it is definitely not for kids. This is an adult fairy tale. Before I go any farther, I must warn you, if you are shaken by sexual assault, rape, incest, these elements in storytelling, this book is not for you. It is not worth it. The themes are heavy, but they are powerful. Deerskin reads a lot like a Grimm Brothers fairy tale, more sophisticated, more poetic, but very much a dark fairy tale. It's a read rooted in dark soil. The messages in this story make it almost like a literary read. And to get a full understanding of what McKinley's trying to accomplish in Deerskin, you gotta put your thinking cap on. We're talking about messaging about neglect, vanity, depression, also perseverance, faith, love. This is all woven together at various points in the story. It's an emotional roller coaster. I mean, every chapter feels like we're getting a new theme thrown at us here, and it works. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed how I felt throughout this novel. No chapter is like the previous chapter. Early on, these chapters play out like mini short stories, and as the story goes on, we get a very cohesive narrative that focuses on things like suppression, survival, intellect. It's a really cool twist on what many people have come to see as classic standalone fantasy fairy tales. And for a fairy tale, there's not a lot of classic tropes in play here. It's really refreshing. There's something of a redemption story in play, and there are certainly rising and falling actions that mirror structures you've probably grown accustomed to seeing growing up in fairy tales. But there's something deeper here that makes it feel new. And I don't even think beautiful captures some of that which you will feel while reading this story. I can't even really put it into words. It is simply stunning, some of the things you'll feel while reading Deerskin. That is both a blessing and a curse in the case of this story. As beautiful as some of the descriptions and the scenery and the scenes in play can be, the story itself, kind of sporadic. As drawn out as some of these story elements are at times, others are rushed often, or worse, conjured out of thin air. Let's talk about the last 25 pages or so in particular. Spoiler free, part of this final series of events is just breathtaking, it's tear jerking. More than memorable is probably the best way to put it. But a lot of it also feels very random and unexplained. And I think some of this might have been done with the intent to surprise the audience, but the issue here is that if we're playing off of uh, something of a formulaic structure, we know that this is going to happen, so there is no surprise to give. That made it a little bit frustrating when I saw just how beautiful one page might be and then the next page is rushed. Side by side doesn't really work. Pacing in general doesn't go well in this story. For instance, 75% of the way in, you should know what the story's objective is, and I didn't. 
I got it for the first like 40%. That middle ground could have been anything. There's obviously a lot of themes that are explored in that time, but from a plot perspective, I didn't really know where we were going with this. I had no clue how this was going to wrap up. I, did, I didn't have any idea how they could manage it in less than 100 pages. They do. It does work. But like I said, some of it's pretty rushed or just conjured out of nowhere. And it's a fairy tale, so you kind of have to accept it. But at the same time, it's not fun. It's just a bit confusing. I think it could have wrapped up a little bit better. And at that you know, three quarters mark, we could have had a better sense of where we were going with this. That's all. Also got to talk about the prose for a minute here because I've talked up McKinley's writing style, but when I consider the master of prose in the fantasy genre, as I said last week, Patrick Rothfuss, I'm talking about a perfect blend of rhythmic writing and concise writing, and McKinley struggles with the latter. She utilizes run-on sentences on purpose. She breaks a lot of rules in writing. It's done by design. However, it's not really necessary at times. Moreover, just comes off a little long-winded. It makes it difficult for the reader to remain engaged when I felt like I was going off course many times with regards to the writing style. It's not to say it's bad. It's actually very good and she's very talented, but she does this all with little dialogue. That might have been the main issue here. There's huge blocks of text. For some readers, it's difficult to concentrate without those breaks. And they teach you this in school. Any good writing seminar is going to at least touch on this. Deerskin has very little dialogue in it. It reads very much from an omniscient macro level perspective like a narrator in a fantasy fairy tale would. Even when there is dialogue, it's usually embedded into this block text so it doesn't help break things up. I found this a little overwhelming. Like I said, it's very akin to a fairy tale, but a lot of fairy tales don't run 400 pages in length. I mean, there's times when we yearn for more conversation versus more description, more summations. There's elements here that are completely long-winded. And then there's also parts of the story that are surmised in a paragraph and could have been expanded into gorgeous dialogue back and forth. I don't know why McKinley opted to forego exploring that, but I think it hurt the novel a bit. This is especially true early on in the story. You'll pick this up in the first paragraph and it doesn't stop for at least the first couple of chapters. That was a turnoff for me. It's why I had trouble sticking with this book early on. On a totally different note, I don't know much about suppressed memories, but that is very much a theme here. The idea that suppression can play such a huge role in somebody's life after a traumatic experience. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not even somebody who experiences those uh, types of repressions, but my only problem with it in McKinley's writing style was the consistent reminders. When I think about suppression and I think about somebody who tries not to think on this stuff versus continually reminding us that it's there. Yes, we have an omniscient narrator here, so they're gonna be forced to give us tidbits and these reminders that need to come into play later in the story throughout, but I didn't need it as much as we got it. Audible check-in time. Did do some of this book on Audible wasn't a huge fan of the narrator. Granted, I warmed up to her by the end, but early on, it didn't really work. She's Lis Lissar, but so much of this does come across from a macro perspective that that shouldn't be in her voice. She constantly talks with a questioning tone, like literally everything, especially the dialogue, is a question that was irritating. And this leads to some of the other characters feeling rather inauthentic and kind of weak. I also didn't think her reading style was worthy of Robin McKinley's prose. Put it this way, Robin McKinley's a much better writer than you're going to get an idea of through the audible version of this story. You're not going to get the same feel for the poetic style of this writing through our narrator's rendition of the work. I did warm up to her as the story went on, and actually by the end I was kind of rooting for her, but early on in the book really didn't work for me. I considered 
putting it aside, but I had some time where Audible was going to be a better option for me, and so I decided to give it another chance. Definitely glad I did. Like I said, I warmed up to her by the end, but I would probably recommend reading the novel over listening to it if you're going to give Deerskin a shot. So, should you give Deerskin a shot? Is it worth it? I'm conflicted on this one. Pacing and dialogue are two uh, important, huge elements of storytelling that Deerskin kind of fails at. So part of me wants to say it's not worth it, but I can't shake some of the emotions that this book made me feel. So much of Deerskin is memorable. I'm not going to forget this book. I don't think ever. The themes are powerful, important, timely, enchanting. We're talking about a story that was almost made for 2021 in 1993. That's rare. When I closed this book, I felt inspirited in a way that is difficult to describe. And for that reason alone, I have to say that it was worth it to read this book. Simply put, if you are an emotive reader, Deerskin's gonna be tugging at your heartstrings in good ways and certainly in bad ways. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Is It Worth It? If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I have plenty of other book reviews up there letting you know whether or not they're worth your time. I post book reviews every week and hopefully you guys stick around for the journey and find your next great read here. Next week, we're coming back to modern times and looking at a really recently released horror novel from an up and coming author. I'm super stoked to talk about it. Can't wait. See you guys then. Keep on reading.